Okay, so first I'm going to go through the question. Um, which of the following headache types is most consistent with this patient's presentation? Okay. Um, and then you said to look at the answer choices. So that'll be tension type headache, migraine cluster, hemicrania continua, or trigeminal neuralgia. Okay. Um, so now we go through the case. Okay. Um, a 40-year-old man presents to the neurologist with a history of recurrent episodes of severe unilateral orbital pain. The pain is associated with ipsilateral lacrimation, nasal congestion, and ptosis. The episode usually occur and last for about one to two hours. He reports that these episodes have been occurring in the past six weeks, usually at the same time each day, and are more common during the night. Which of the following headache types is most consistent with this patient's presentation? Okay, um, there is no imaging or labs here. Um, but my gut initially is a migraine headache. Um, I do think I will keep this because cluster headaches is my other close one. Firstly, because it is also unilateral, it's also orbital. But I think cluster headaches tend to be a lot shorter and are extremely, extremely painful. Um, they okay. do happen more in men, but I don't think they last this long for cluster headaches. And see, this is kind of where I'm like, my 50-50 would come down to. Um, this is where I kind of would sit on the question and be like, oh, what does it, does it not last for two hours? And so this is where I feel like I mess up a lot. Um, Okay. So, so yeah. talk me through this. So, so your, your gut is migraine. Okay. My and, gut is migraine. Yes. Sure. Okay. And then what, what, what do you, what do you 50, 50 on migraine and what cluster, right? Yes. Migraine okay. and cluster. Cause okay. but, well, yeah. so let's talk about that. Okay. So you said, okay, tell me what you know about migraine and we'll work it through it together. How about that? So migraines I know can last for a long time. They're usually unilateral and I don't know if they're necessarily orbital or not. I wouldn't necessarily describe them as orbital. They do last on one side. They can be triggered by photo, photo um, by like ex extreme light or, um, okay. like, and they can have with, what's called an aura with them. Um, sure. They can have uh, hallucinations and other things like that. Okay. Um, so yeah, and I, I would say they actually last from like four to two to four to two to six hours. Okay, okay. Um, and yeah, so that's what I would say about migraines. Okay. So you already told me a little about cluster. So now talk to me, like, if if you were to look back at this question, okay, um, well, what supports migraine? Give me give me the give me the case evidence that supports migraine here. Unilateral. Okay. Um. Two one to two hours. Okay. Sure. Okay. And um, episodes occur at night. I think is a big one as well. Okay, I so you give consistent. me three pieces of information that support migraine, right? Am I correct there? Yes. So I'm going to go with three here. Okay, talk to me about what supports cluster here. To me, um, severe, again, unilateral and orbital pain. Okay. Um, I don't know about lacrimation or nasal congestion. To me, that does sound more, uh, I actually don't know 100%, like if that falls one way or the other. Okay. The one hour sounds better to me for 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 cluster okay and then he's a man a okay. man always well men tend to get uh cluster headaches a lot more than okay. women. so what i counted when you mentioned was four pieces of evidence there okay, okay. so as of right now do you still want to keep migraine or do you want to move no i probably moved to cluster then okay let's see okay it is cluster. Oh, great okay okay do you see how we work through that yeah. Okay. But even on things that you don't know, like I said, okay, I always say on questions that you work through, right? Um, you only need about, to be honest, about 70% of the information to get the question right. Okay. That sounds really wild and wicked, right? But um, if you start thinking about things in a clinical setting, more of the clinical picture, right? If you have 70% of the clinical picture, you can probably lean towards one answer or not. So you don't need to know every single little thing about the question. Okay. Okay. So here, the, one of the key things that I want to mention to you too is that um, what are, do you know what the difference between sensitivity and specificity is uh, in a symptom? So I think of it in terms of biochem and biostats. I think of okay. sensitivity as a true positive, like I guess uh, rate, and okay. specificity is a true negative rate. Okay. And so, so I would do a sensitive test to determine if someone has a disease. Okay. And then specific a specific test to determine if the disease that I think it is is the disease that they have. 
Okay, gotcha. So I like what you said at the very end. I'm going to I'm going to relay that to a more clinical setting because it's going to be a little bit more applicable when you think about it like this. So that helps you on questions. The biostat stuff, you know, when you take those kind of questions and you're doing biostats. Um, yeah, great to do kind of your two by two, you know, a little format. Right. I even have to do that because, you know, I, I can't do it without that box. But mm -hmm. what I'm talking about is more on a clinical standpoint, which I want to gear you towards when doing these questions. So when you're talking about something that's sensitive, okay, I'm going to, you know, abbreviate it, S-E-N here, sensitive, mm -hmm. you're talking about something that is overarching, right? Meaning that a lot of diseases can have it. So can you give me a symptom or a, um, you know, let's say, um, or a physical exam finding that's very sensitive for almost all diseases? Yeah, right? fever. Yeah, fever, right? Super sensitive. It just means you're sick, right? It doesn't mean anything else besides that you're sick, right? But I can't tell you if you have a bacterial infection, a viral mm -hmm. infection, cancer, you ran a marathon. I can't tell you anything, right? I just know that you're sick, correct? Yes. So that's sensitive, okay? So specific is something that is specific to a disease process, right? Very specific, right? Um, AKA, right? If you think about it, um, that is what we call as quote unquote buzzwords, on test, mm -hmm. right? Because they're very specific, right? So um, on when you're taking tests, I want you to really be focused on things that are specific because sensitive things are not very great, right? It's not going to help you differentiate between diagnosis. So you're really looking for okay. what is specific, right? So in particular, right? Um, I always say that the, you know, in this particular case, right, a couple of things are specific for cluster headaches, right? So ipsilateral lacrimation, right? nasal congestion and ptosis, right? Ptosis means like the eye is pointy outy, right? You don't yeah. get that with migraines, right? That doesn't happen with migraines, right? Um, let me clear this, right? Because it's getting kind of crazy. So ipsilateral lacrimation mean your tear ducts are kind of going, right? Orbital pain is very specific for cluster, yes. right? And then eye poking out, right? Is very specific for cluster headache, right? And of course, right? In a male, it has a greater predilection for males. So already, right? If you saw ptosis, orbital pain, and lacrimation, I'm already thinking that it has to be clustered because migraines don't give you that. And like I said, what are some specific things about migraine that you told me about that you need to be looking for? Yeah, if, like photophobia, phonophobia, yeah. auras, hallucinations. Yeah. 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 So all these things, right? So um, so all these things that you told me about, right? You, you already knew these things, right? And so I think what's happening when you're going through this question is... Um, you might be overthinking a little bit, right? Because you already have the pieces there, right? You would say. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really good. Um, and that's kind of what I usually do. I usually focus on like, for example, I kind of hyper fixate on, oh shoot. I kind of, I think I just ignore a lot of things that are really pointing to the correct answer. And I hyper fixate on what um like for example one to two hours and i would that's usually what i do and i'll sit there for like three minutes just trying to get my brain to work around like okay is it one hour is it two hours and just trying to remember some type of like mnemonic or some type of anything to like help me remember is it one to two hours is it shorter is it longer um sure, sure. yeah how, how i want you to do that if you ever get into that mode is i want you to numerically assign how many pieces of evidence per diagnosis it makes it very apparent because sometimes, I know this sounds weird, but sometimes when you're going through something, you know, three pieces of evidence versus four pieces of evidence to you, if you don't write that out, it seems like it's equal, correct? You know what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say? Yes. Yeah, because remember, there is there was a difference when we tallied up, right? But in your mind, if you don't purposely do that, then you're like, oh, man, it's like it's 50-50, right? But really, in actuality, it's not 50-50, you know? So Yeah, okay. And I, yeah, that's because I didn't even, I didn't 100% remember like lacrimation is a condition in ptosis to be 100% sure. specific. So it would have been, it would have been seven to three. Exactly. Exactly. It's a lot more, but like I said, you don't need to know everything, right? I, I'm always trying to tell you guys that, you know, the best way is to look at things clinically. And even if you only have a couple pieces of information, it should be enough to get you to the right answer. 